the Lord. Welcome back to JOP Evangelistic Outreach Ministry. I'm the servant leader for this afternoon, Evangelist Jerry Doe. Are you ready for your weekly dose of encouragement? I know that I am, and I know that you are also. You know this, we're going to have a blessed week this week. Our topic discussion this week would be returning back to the Lord. Yes, returning back to the Lord. We're going to look at several scriptures coming from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24, Revelation 3, 20, and Matthew 11. 28. Yes, on top of discussion, returning back to the Lord, we will be looking at the prodigal son. Yes, the prodigal son. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you are at a far distance from God? Well, guess what? We can, you can return back to God. Oh, yes, there is a process. We must repent of our sins, be godly sorry, and return back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Turn with me because I know you have your word now. So turn with me to Luke chapter 15 and we will be starting at verse 11. And it reads, and he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his sustenance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to eat and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Verse 18. And I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Verse 22, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Verse 24, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they begin to be merry. Verse 24 again, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they begin to be merry. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful word of God. What an awesome word of God. Here Jesus is speaking here in Luke, and here we see the parable of the prodigal son. Yes, one that is so familiar, the prodigal son that we're in here, the prodigal son, he wanted his inheritance. And back during this time, the father, every day inheritance went down to the children. And so this son, 
And we, there's a word that doesn't say, but it says he wanted his inheritance and his father gave it to him. And he went far away. He went away and he, the word of God says he began to live. He had a, he began to live wickedly. He began to live in his sin. He began to waste things. He began to uh, just enjoy the, 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 the flesh, the, the worldly, the worldly goods. And a time came where he didn't have anything else to eat. He didn't have nothing because he had spent everything that he had. He spent it all. He didn't have nothing. And so he found himself at a place and uh, it's a beautiful story, a uh, scripture here. He found himself in a place that when there was nothing to eat, the famine came into the land and he began, he needed things. He needed to eat. He had no money. He had nothing to buy anything. So he joined himself to a citizen of that country. And when this, that place, that, that citizen there sent him out to be alone, he put him to be alone the, uh, in the fields to feed the swine. And the swine here represents the pig. He found himself there. And so he didn't have anything to fill his belly to even eat of and no man gave him anything no work no nothing he had nothing and he and he but the word of god says that he he uh he thought about what it was like at home what his father had he remembered what his father had and his father had hired servants and, his, and he remembered that everything that his father his father when they fed the, even the servants the servants had food left over and he came to himself and i just want to suggest here that when he was living in sin and we are living in that sinful, wicked life. When we come to ourselves, when we come to realize that life is much better going back to God, life is much better returning back to the Father. And that's what this son did. This son said to himself, he said, I have sinned against heaven. He sinned against God. He sinned against his father and he wanted to make things right. He said he wanted to go back and he he just began to go back. And so it says, the word of God says in verse uh, 20, and he arose and he came to his father. And when he was yet from afar off, his father saw him from afar off. His, the word of God says his father had compassion for him. Isn't that just like Jesus? Doesn't Jesus not have compassion for us? His father began to run toward him. His father was so glad, so happy. I just can't imagine a great big smile and tears of joy, perhaps. It doesn't say it, but I'm just using imagine. And as you, can you see that when your child is lost and has been living a wicked life, and is returning, coming back. Oh, what an awesome, what an awesome, perhaps awesome feeling that this father felt. But the word of God says he had compassion. And that's what Jesus had for us, compassion. He began to repent of his sin. He said he repented because he had sinned. He recognized his sin. He didn't try and throw it off on anyone else. He didn't try and say that this person made me do this or that. He recognized his own mistakes and knew what it took to go back to the Lord. He recognized that repentance is it for us today. We must repent of our sins and return back unto the Lord. Yes, we can. We must repent and return back. God is yet waiting. He is there waiting for us at the door. In, in Revelation 3.20, it puts it so well. And it reads, Behold, I stand at the door. This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. If any man will come to hear the voice of God, God is standing at the door of our heart. He is knocking at our hearts. If you hear the voice of God, oh, if you hear the voice of God, what an awesome word. If you hear his voice and 
open that door, if you will allow yourself to return, return back to God, if you hear his voice and open up the door, the word of God says that he will come in and he, Jesus, that is, will sup with us. He will be with us. He will be with us. Amen. Amen. He will be with us. Behold, we can come back. Jesus has the same compassion. That's what the prodigal son father learned. He learned. He walked in the footsteps of Jesus. He had compassion. And that's what we must have. We must have compassion for our children. We must have compassion for our co-workers. We must have compassion for our neighbor. We must have compassion one to another, our brothers and our sisters. We must have compassion. We must have love. Love is the key. Jesus is the key. We must have the love that Jesus gave. And he told us and now that our Heavenly Father yet speaks to us and speaks to us and letting us know that we must have as well also and turn now to Matthew eleven twenty eight, and it reads here again this is Jesus speaking unto us come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest so it matters not what one is going through it matters not what one is feeling and going through when we out there you're out there living this wicked life and you know living in sin it just simply means being separated from the Lord that's all that it is being separated from the Lord not walking in the path that God has had for us not listening to the voice of God, not trusting God, not obeying God, and doing what he has commanded us to do through his word. Sin is simply turning away from God. We must repent of our sins. We must ask God to forgive us and be godly sorry and return back to the Lord. Oh, we have an awesome opportunity right now to return back to God. Amen. 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 Let's pause for a moment of prayer. Most holy God, our Father, our Lord and our Savior. Lord God, we thank you for the study for this week, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for letting us know that in our sins, in our wrongdoing, Lord God, we can confess our sin. We have repentance, Lord God. We repent of our sins and we return back unto you, Lord God. Oh Father, for we're godless sorrow, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for open up your arms, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for knocking at the door of our hearts, Lord God. And Father, we hear your voice now, Lord God, we are asking and we're returning back to you, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. You have a blessed week. Do you put your smile on? I know you have your smile going on. I know you're allowing the love that's within. Go ahead on and walk with us as we go throughout this week. Oh, yes. Have a blessed week. It's okay. You're going to be good. Good. Everything is well in Jesus' name. Have a blessed week and we'll see you the next time. Amen. Amen. God bless you.